So I'm about three months into my long-term loan of this Kia Seltos GT line all-wheel drive, and the odometer has just ticked over 3,000 kilometers, which is a fair few miles to have done. Over that time, I've learned the ins and the outs, I've learned to love and loathe a few things of this car, but if I'm honest, there aren't that many things to hate, which is a good thing. Chasing cars, honest reviews of your next car. Brought to you by Budget Direct. But before we dive into my driving impressions and what I've learned from being behind the wheel for those few thousand kilometers of this Saltos, there's a couple of things on the interior that I'd like to bring up. First up, I wanna talk about my absolute favorite feature that I've discovered so far in this Saltos, and that is the ventilated seats up front. Now, I'm not sure that there's any better application of these ventilated seats than a long drive in the Australian summer, and they've been an absolute godsend so far. The only issue is, they only come standard on the range-topping GT line, and I'm not sure that these seats alone are worth the $6,000 premium that you pay over the next level down, which is that Sport Plus all-wheel drive, but that's so good. Okay, so what I'm about to say is probably gonna be quite an unpopular opinion, but I don't actually hate that speed limiter warning assist system that comes standard in the Seltos. Now, before you berate me in the comments, let me explain myself. So. Under normal driving conditions, when it latches onto a speed limit, just set the adaptive cruise to that speed limit and you live happy. No fines, no beeping, it's a great time. In saying that, I have been frustrated coming into school zones first of all, because it doesn't know when school zones are active and when they're not, so it'll automatically latch onto that 40 km an hour limit and go nuts at you, which isn't fun. And also, in the chasing car's office, when we leave our car park, there's a five kilometer an hour speed limit sign down there, and the Seltos can't differentiate that speed limit from the speed limit on the road. And I tell you what, going 50 k's an hour when it thinks that you should be going five k's an hour, it's not happy. But all that aside, the reason why I actually like this system is because it's one of the most accurate speed limit sign recognition systems I've come across. Sure, it gets angry and it beeps, but fundamentally, it's a good system and it works. It's a pity most people don't like it. My next point relates to the back of the Seltos, specifically the cargo area, because while it's actually quite generous for a small SUV, and because of the Seltos' tall stature, there's a lot of space to actually load things in, it's compromised by that second row of seats once they're folded down, because unlike something like the Honda HRV, which has a purely flat floor, so loading large objects like a small TV cabinet that I had to load in recently when I moved house, aren't an issue in the Honda, here, the lip on those seats there makes it quite an issue and you kind of awkwardly have to get in from the rear doors to lift it over. And although it shouldn't be a deal breaker, it's just worth noting that this isn't the best vehicle for moving things. So other than the standard commute, which is only about four or five Ks that I do every day, the only really big trip that I've done in the Seltos is a trip down to Canberra. And that was actually on the first night I got it. So it was pretty fresh and it was fun. I enjoyed it. So small SUVs like this Seltos right here, usually they're built with city hopping in mind, kind of like shopping or supermarket trips. They're not really something that you'd think to take on a long distance trip if you've got another car in the garage. But if anything, that trip down to Canberra, it reaffirmed to me that this Seltos, it's comfortable on long drives. At 100 kilometers an hour on the highway, the revs comfortably sit under the 2000 RPM mark and the engine doesn't feel overstressed and is just happy cruising along. This is obviously also helped by that eight-speed transmission that is very nice to use at speed on the motorway. Another aspect worth mentioning is the ride that the Seltos offers at speed because it is really good. Around the city, over bumps, I mean, I've said this before, it's not great, but at speed on the motorway, it's beautiful. Because that drive down to Canberra was done at night, I got acquainted with a somewhat quirky feature of the Seltos in its ambient sound light display monitoring system. I'm not actually sure what it's called, but basically it's got lights embedded in its Bose speaker sound system and they attempt to go off in time with the music. They are all different kind of colors. It kind of makes for a bit of a disco-like experience in the car, but the only issue is it's not quite in rhythm with the music. I found it for that drive didn't really bother me, but it wasn't until my colleague Zach used it, I think another night for an airport pickup, and he came back to me asking if my ambient lighting system was broken, and I just had to tell him that, no, it's the, um, 
music system that attempts to keep up with the beat, but is just a little off. It's quirky, but I kind of like it. And lastly, probably the best feature that I discovered on that long trip, my first trip with the car, was the head-up display that comes standard in the Seltos GT line. It's simple, there's not a lot of information, but it just tells you your speed limit and whether or not you're staying in the lane or not, and whether or not the Lane Keep Assist system is active. So, I like it. As for a fuel economy, it averaged just under the 8 litres per 100 kilometre mark, which isn't quite at Kia's claim, but hey, it's not far off. And for a comfortable small SUV that has enough power to pass on the open road, it's pretty impressive. But with a fuel economy in the high 7s or low 8s, I'm still unsure as to whether you can actually call the Seltos GT line fuel efficient. To answer this question, you've got to look at something along the lines of the Toyota Corolla Cross Hybrid, which for a similar drive, you'd expect to sit in the low to mid 5s, which obviously is a lot more fuel efficient than the Seltos. This is something that I want to explore more, and I'm sure throughout the rest of my long term loan, I will have a bit more time behind the wheel on long trips to see how efficient it really is. So those are my thoughts so far on the Kia Seltos GT line all wheel drive. This weekend I'm actually planning on heading out to Orange and visiting Bathurst for the very first time. Hopefully also a wee cheeky lap of Mount Panorama squeezed in, at the speed limit obviously, but I'll be sure to report back how she goes over Skyline. So if you have any other suggestions on what else I should be testing on this Seltos, make sure to leave a comment down below, and while you're down there, why not subscribe? And as always, thanks for watching Chasing Cars.